All right, let's get it. This is Nap Nose Buffalo. Uh, as always, Kyle Knapp right here. Uh, the show looks a little different. Once again, if you're watching on YouTube, um, Casey is off doing more important things right now as uh, he is officially a dad as you're listening to this. So uh, if you're listening, watching, whatever, go over to Twitter, congratulate Casey. I know he's very proud right now um, and he will talk about it plenty when he gets back on the show. So I want to leave that part to him because He'll have a lot to say, but uh, I have another guest on here and was going to be a guest. Originally, it was going to be me, Casey, and Nate Geary from WGR, but uh, instead of just being a guest, Nate's now the co-host. Nate, how's it going today? Good, man. Uh, thanks for having me on. I I, I went uh, a sophisticated route for this show because I heard that you were a uh, you were a sophisticated man, so I got myself some Chardonnay. <laughs> you know what? I, like, I do like me some wine. Um, I'll probably catch some heat for that from some of the fanatics guys. I know they gave me some, uh, they were not too happy with some of my drink choices that I mentioned that I might like to consume every now and then um, because Listen, it wasn't bourbon. I, and if you stop bourbon, you're going to catch a lot of heat from bourbon drinkers. Uh, here's the thing. As a avid bourbon drinker myself, um, I think there's a time and place for a delicious you know, bourbon on the rocks. But um, what I have found about social media Kyle, um, is that um, almost regardless of what it is you like or enjoy, um, people will call you an idiot for liking or enjoying that. So, oh, um, definitely. You know, definitely. if you have a take about something you like, just be prepared for somebody to call you an idiot. Yeah, no, that's true. And see, the thing was when I gave my answers, I, I think it was like what I think we were talking on the pregame show at some point last season that that we do over at Fanatics about like what is our favorite pregame seltzer to drink. It mm. wasn't like specific drink. It was like a seltzer. And so I said, high noon is my favorite. And then the guys that came on right after us were like, oh, you didn't answer with a bourbon. And I'm like, wait a second. We weren't even talking about like whiskey or any was other beer with or anything. I, yeah, I don't know. Like, that's a bold move. Yeah. But we were talking about seltzers. So I gave my answer with like a seltzer or that sort of drink. And people were like, I, I just caught a lot of flack for it. And I don't know. It's. I'm I'm very into whiskey, bourbon, all that, but you know what? Apparently, apparently, if you answer the question the way it was asked, that's not good enough for some people. Yeah, that makes that that that's about right. Listen, I mean, if somebody wants to say something about my my wine choice, I do have some ruby <laughs> reds just waiting. I just got done grocery shopping, so I'm pretty stocked up. I respect that. I like that. Ruby red is always a good choice. Um, so we actually just a quick background. We got connected for anybody who either doesn't follow i don't know like how you would be paying attention to this if you're not following us on social media well, at least one of us in yeah. some way yeah but um maybe like a month back i think casey and i were doing a show and we talked about how like we we hadn't really talked about josh allen up to that point and we put out like a quote graphic of something that casey said and it got it picked up a fair amount of traction on social media and you noticed it and you kind of talked about it on your show on WGR a little bit. And so we kind of connected after that and we're like, Hey, we would love to have you on the show because we thought that was a really interesting talking point that we were hopefully going to be able to discuss a little bit. I wanted to kind of flesh that out first sure. before we got sure. into our regular topic, um, because we've actually gone on to talk about Josh Allen a little bit more since then. Um, but it's not been because we've had like specific topics that we wanted to cover with him. It was because, there was different arguments like social media arguments that came up. And so I still think it's kind of interesting that some, I think something that you said when you were on the radio is like, it's weird that we have such a good quarterback and now we're just, we're content with not necessarily having to talk about him yeah. because he's good and we know that he's good, but there's still questions surrounding him. So um, I wanted to kind of give anybody who didn't hear you talking about that a chance to kind of, um, hear your thoughts on like, why aren't we talking about Josh Allen as some content creators? Cause like we're talking about it in the bars and with our sure. friends all the time. Like, it's not like we're not talking about him. He just might not be the topic of a podcast that you're listening to or a radio show that you're listening to all the time. Yeah. I mean, I, I you know, I almost make the argument where we've sort of taken it for granted um, how good he was last year and, and sort of what that means for the future, right? And, and I think now there are so many other storylines to talk about. And I think for the most part, for the better part of what, I mean, my lifetime, three decades, two and a half decades, the topic of conversation has been franchise quarterback, franchise quarterback, franchise quarterback. So I think for the most part, the, the scar tissue still exists 
And I think it's part of why people maybe are cautiously optimistic about Josh. And maybe there's this, not, not this willingness of, I don't know if I'm totally sold that he's, you know, Aaron Rodgers or Tom Brady or Patrick Mahomes, one of these, you know, top two, top three guys. But I also recognize that he is a franchise quarterback and he isn't, you know, one of these bottom feeders that the Bills uh, have been putting out in the field for the better part of two and a half decades. So it's a very think, good way to put it, bottom feeders that we've right, had on yeah, the field. I mean, that, that just is the way that it is. And, you know, I think for me, what it comes down to is a level of confidence quiet confidence and i know that's probably pushing it when you talk about bills fans i wouldn't say that <laughs> after last year i would uh, i would coin what has happened or or kind of how the social media persona of bills fans online um quiet confidence probably isn't the the best word to use but um I, there is just this underlying level of confidence that there are other things to talk about and 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 i think for the most part people feel just so confidently about the quarterback that what is there to talk about other than a contract what is there to talk about about how much he's making right is it is it going to be mm -hmm. 45 million is it going to be 50 million what is he going to make per year um otherwise outside of contract i just don't know what else right now you could want to talk about with the quarterback position you know short of like you know how great it would be to have julio jones playing on the on the team so i just right, think yeah. there, there, the lack of storylines i think is a a really good thing but i think also a sign of sort of the road that Bills fans have been on and have gotten to. And I think the reality is that, you know, I think most people believe that Josh Allen is um, a top three or top four quarterback in the league. And with, with that comes very little storylines. Yeah. And I, I think it'll become interesting even more so like when he gets his contract, because at that point, then his contract influences all the other positions. Mm -hmm. And then the storylines become, well, how do we fill the needs within, the financial structures that we have because it becomes even more different then. And like, we're talking about that right now with, I mean, cornerback was a, a topic of discussion, offensive line, defensive end, like re-signing guys even was a topic of discussion. And we haven't even hit that point with Josh Allen's contract. So I, I think it's, it's weird considering how my entire life we've talked about the quarterback position, even last off season, like we're, we're talking about how can Josh Allen take that next step? But a quiet confidence, that's a really good way to put it where like we are we're definitely confident in him. I think everybody in Bill's Mafia is confident in yeah. him, but we definitely still want to see it again oh, yeah. this year. Something along the lines. Like it doesn't have to be exactly what he did last year. I think that'd be tough to duplicate to to have that type of season. Even if he I mean, even if he you take like five touchdowns away and you add that extra game, but he still has five less touchdowns, I think that's still a successful season for him, and people are probably happy. And then hopefully that the same thing next year where like the storyline isn't Josh Allen. Like I don't want the storyline to be Josh Allen almost because if it becomes Josh Allen, that probably means there's some sort of a regression that we don't want to see. Well, I think to a lot of what goes into this conversation around Allen and really just around the conversation of quarterbacks in the NFL is people use this term ceiling, right? Like what's a player ceiling? And when you see a player play to their ceiling, you almost assume that you have to build in the regression, that they're going to regress from the ceiling. But, you know, I, I wonder out loud, you know, do people believe that what we saw last year was Josh Allen's ceiling? Or do we believe that that is the point that he'll eventually regress to and that there is another level? Um, and, and I think that's kind of the interesting part of the conversation just is where do people, is there a consensus on where his ceiling is? Was he at it? Or do you believe there's still room to grow? I I would argue I think there's still room to grow, at least a little bit. I mean, I mean, not that much, but I, I think as a thrower um, cerebrally, um, as, a, as a guy that can, you know, I, I was, who was I listening to? Maybe it was um, Rob Stroud was on the afternoon show this afternoon. He covers the Bucks. He was talking about Tom Brady, and, and one of the things that is sort of often said about Tom Brady is he already has the answers to the test. You can't really fool him pre-snap. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the one area where Josh can continue to sort of grow is the cerebral part of the game is diagnosing defenses pre-snap. Um, getting your offense into better play calls. So I think those are areas that if he can get better at, he can remain the same on the field. But if he takes a step up, you know, between the ears, um, you know, I think that could be a really legitimate step forward that, that maybe you can't point to a particular skill or number or data point or analytic point, but say, hey, this is a guy that's starting to understand it more cerebrally on the field. And I think that could be the thing that maybe uh, pushes him up another notch. Yeah, it's almost like he doesn't have to get better physically. Like he, we know no. he can bomb the ball. We know he has accuracy at this point. Like we saw it for 16 games last year. It's not like it's a small sample size at that point. When the guy is at that accurate for a full season, like you know he has it in him. Yeah. So we know I mean, he his has career those skill high, sets. 
his career high completion percentage, 69 point, whatever it is, is a full percentage point higher than Tom Brady's career high. Yeah. So, yeah. no, I mean, so you know he has it in him. So I think it's just that mental side of the game, whether it is pre snap, whether it's who know, like going through different reads or whatever. Maybe it's the timing of some things. Who, like, who knows? There's obviously things that Allen could still work on because he's, he's only three years and he's still relatively a raw talent, which is pretty mm -hmm. crazy to say. But, yeah, I mean, I don't think we know what his ceiling is, whether it is last year or above that. Who knows? I, I'm very excited to find out, though. Um, so, I guess, actually, I, I did have one more question before we get into our actual topic, um, which we're going to be ranking the top three players at each offensive position group in the AFC East. Um, just kind of see where the Bills gauge out against the other teams and see, like, it does every team have somebody – on their roster who could be one of those top players. So we'll get into that in a second. I don't know if you saw it because I know we, we just got on. It actually just got announced, but um, the Buffalo Fanatics are doing, they're partnering with uh, a, a golf event that's going to involve some Bills players and whatnot. Um, I know you're a, you're a big golf guy. I would consider myself that. Yeah. Yeah. Is, is that something I don't, I know it's going to be in Buffalo. I don't really know many of the events because unf unfortunately I am out of town that weekend, but how confident would you be that if you showed up, I believe they said it was going to be a scramble. You put a team together, you show up, how confident would you be in yourself getting a win at that event? It's Cause I know you're, I know you're confident. I know you're, I think, I mean, you tweet about it all the time. Like you're like a six, seven, I might be, I might be a little off on that, but like six or seven handicap, right? Uh, I am a six, uh, six point something. I probably am in a seven now after the Bills media tournament. So listen, uh, I talked a lot of crap before the Bills media tournament, and then I went and laid a big giant egg. Um, but if I were to put a team together of my four finest, um, my four finest players, including me, I. I, I think I'd probably win it. When is it? It's 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 July seventeenth. August. Right? It's August twenty ninth. Yeah. August twenty ninth. At Harvest Hill, huh? I hate that course. I don't play it very well. I, I mean, but, I've never I've never played there. I don't even live in New York State anymore, so I'm not around there to play. I, I grew up in Rochester, so I played a lot of Rochester courses. Gotcha. Only really played a. I think I've played a course in Buffalo once. I don't even remember which course it was. So I like I don't play around there very often, but. I, it sounds like it'd be a really fun event. Yeah, no, for sure. I, um, you know, I, frankly, I'm, I don't love scrambles. Um, but uh, if I put together a four teamer, the reason I don't love scrambles, by the way, is because a lot of people cheat. Uh, yeah. It's it's easy to cheat. Um, so that's the reason I don't like them. Um, but I would, you know, I would. I I, I saw when Buffalo go uh, tweeted about it the other day, and then. Obviously, you guys being the big sponsor for it now and, and having some Bills players involved is pretty cool. Yeah, um, this guy right over my shoulder. Quick little Stevie Johnson. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you know, it's I'm, I'm going to have to really highly consider it because mostly I need to I – think, I think I need to defend my honor, um, and I think I need to find a way to win that tournament. But the, like I said, the problem is scrambles are, like, notoriously bad for cheaters. And I've never won a scramble, and I've shot, like, a 59 in a scramble before <laughs> – and we lost. So um, that's, that's impressive to not win at that point. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I've I've got some I've got some go low handicappers that I could definitely bring out and and and, and take a run for the money. But uh, yeah, we'll we'll see. We'll have to we'll have to see if I if I put the, put put a team together for that. Who would be Who would be a, a Bills player that you would want to try and golf with outside of? I think Josh Allen would be like the the main answer. So because I think that that would probably be everybody's first answer. But is there a player sure. outside of him? Yeah, so uh, the problem is he's he he just he left in free agency. Andre Roberts is a hell of a golfer. Um, he would have been the guy that I would have most wanted to golf with. Now, you know, I don't really know what the game is for some of these guys. Um, you know, I, I think for me, I think the obvious answer for non-current players would be Kyle Williams because that's he's what a, I was going to say. Yeah, stick. Um, but man, current team, who would I want? Um, I'm trying to think of who who would be like a low key good golfer. Like Mitchell Morse reminds me of a guy that might just like walk out on the golf course and be a stick. Um, I was see. I was thinking about this beforehand. I was trying to think of guys who might either be really good or or like, just be entertaining or just to be golf fun. With. Yeah, like I, I think I think Trey, Trey White, White would be fun. Yeah, we said at the same time. Yeah, not I think he'd uh, be a lot of fun. You you owe me a glass of wine. 
Um, All right. Yeah, no, I, I, I think that's right. I think it would have to be Trey White. That, that'd be the guy that I'd want to hang with. So, Yeah, just spend like an afternoon listening to him tell stories. I Yeah, I, I think that would be a lot of fun. So him or maybe, ago, maybe Deion Dawkins too. I think yeah, that yeah, could yeah. get interesting, yeah. Yeah, so two years ago, uh, pre-pandemic, Bill's Media Tournament, Briarwood Country Club in Hamburg. This was when a media member would be paired with either a Bill's coach or front office person. And mm-hmm. it would be two-man – best ball. I came in second place my first year doing the tournament. Um, I had Bill's Nick, is is he nickel? Is he their big nickel coach? Jimmy Salguero. Okay. Me and him got linked up. Jimmy sits down. We, 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 we get to the, our, our our shotgun tee box. He's like, listen, man, you know, I haven't, I I get to play like once a year. So this, this is probably going to (laughs) get ugly, but the guy just smokes. He's just smoking drives. And I, I'm very, I can hit the ball very far. I just hit it very inconsistently. So we were a great combo because I was hitting all the iron shots. He was hitting all the tee shots. Mm-hmm. And each of us were put, knocking down some putts. We ended up losing to Jay Skirsky of the Buffalo News and Brandon Bean, who I, by the way, think <laughs> he's, I, I, think, I think he cheated. But that, that's neither here nor he there. Gets, he gets the courtesy of cheating. He does. Though, he does. Like, he you does. can't and, call him out for that. And for a long time, Jerry Sullivan was sort of the back-to-back winner of the golf tournament. I've golfed with Jerry a couple times. I don't know, I don't know how people let themselves lose to Jerry Sullivan, but I'm, I'm a big Jerry fan, but I would never let him beat me on the golf course. So uh, I'm hoping next year we move back into a more integrated format where we can get linked up with a coach or a, a front office guy. Cause that, that, that's really fun getting to know, uh, you know, somebody that, that, that works for the team. And I, the golf club that I used to be at at Briarwood had Ke- uh, Ken Dorsey was a member, mm-hmm. um, Chad Hall. And I'm trying to think of who the quarterbacks coach is. Um, whoever the quarterbacks coach is, sorry. Uh, those guys used to get out in the morning tea time right before me every morning. So they'd be out there all summer long at six 15. I'd have the seven or the six 30 tea time. Um, and I play behind those guys all the time. They're they're Those guys, you know, they, they get out in the summer when you're a coach, but when you're a player, you know, you don't get, you don't get too much time out in the course. Yeah. I, I can imagine as a player, the springtime is that that's your golfing season as a player at that mm-hmm. point. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. So let's get into the actual topic. Um, yeah. Top three players at each position group. We each have our list. What we're going to do, uh, we're each going to just present our three players with no explanation. And then wherever we disagree, because I'm sure there will be a couple, sure. we might, we'll, we'll hit on a couple of them. There's a couple like locked in guarantees, but there's going to be some players that we disagree on, whether it's who's in that spot or who's even on the list for us. So at that point, we got to figure out between the two of us um, who is going to be the actual player that the we quarterback conversation there. I'm really looking forward to. Should we start I, with offensive have, line first so that we can leave quarterback yeah. for last? Yeah, so let's let's go offensive line, tight end, wide receiver, running back, Deal. quarterback. Just kind of go in line of where I think people would kind of rank their their usually I guess most talked about positions. Sure. Although I guess wide receiver would be right after quarterback. Either way, let's start with offensive line. Who who are your three guys that you have listed? Yeah, so I'm gonna start with Makai Becton because I think he's the best offensive lineman period in the division. Um, I think he's got the highest upside, and I think he's you know arguably one of the best young players in the league, not just at off- offensive line. Mm-hmm. Um, I've got Deion Dawkins is number two, um, and my number three is Patriots center David Andrews. Okay, so I had two of the same ones. I actually had Dawkins and Becton. I had them flipped at the moment just because okay. Dawkins has that veteran experience. Um, so I think that gives him an edge at the moment for me, but I completely agree. I think Becton has all of the upside in the world and he, I mean, he has the potential to be like one of the top three left tackles in the league for X number of years, however long he can stay healthy. Um, but I actually had Shaq Mason okay. on my list at guard. I think he, yeah, he's a, he's a guard for the Patriots. I mm-hmm. actually had him on my list because I think he, He's a little bit younger. I know David Andrews, he he's getting up there a little he bit. Is. I like that Shaq Mason has the experience, but he's not like older to the point where you're worried maybe he's gonna get beat by somebody with you know who's just got a little bit more juice in their system at the moment. I guess that might be a bad way to put a juice in their system, but um yeah, I mean, you know, like I, I like that he has the experience without having too much experience at this point. Yeah, you know, I think that makes sense. I the I, he's sort of just the linchpin of that offensive line. And listen, I mean, I think we would have both. I think we would have had the top three if Joe Tooney doesn't get picked up in free right. agency and goes to Kansas City. Our three are the exact same three. Yeah. So I think this really kind of first of all, 
This is more less of a conversation around, you know, Shaq Mason and potentially David Andrews and way more of an indictment of the Miami Dolphins and their inability to really yeah. put together a unit when they've had multiple first round picks. They, they're, they're sort of ignoring the position. They go out and they draft Austin Jackson, who I just wasn't a big fan of. Um, I don't think um, is the type of player right now that, um, you know, is putting any fear into my eyes. So, yeah, like overall, the Dolphins, I don't really think have the pieces up front. Um at all on the offensive line to, to really warn anybody in this conversation. No, and I, w- I was really trying to find somebody from the Dolphins as that I could I. put, even even as just like a what if maybe we can talk about them also. But like – Nobody. I Yeah, it, there's really nobody that I can – I feel like they can actually – even if you're talking about like the next guy up I think would probably be Daryl Williams. Like I, I would consider him being like one of the next guys up. Um, obviously, like we, we had – had David Andrews and then Shaq Mason. So like either of them, but like I would go back to one of the teams that we already have covered to talk about if we weren't talking about one of the guys that we already listed. And I, I would like to throw in a guy that just as tribute in Mitchell Morse, who I think is probably one of the more overlooked and underrated. I think he's you know right up there with, with David Andrews is the, the best center in the division. So I, you know, I think he's a guy that often gets overlooked Maybe because he's not making the big sexy plays, but he's a one of the best pass blocking centers in all of football. Yeah, yeah, and having a center who has the connection with your quarterback is obviously huge. And Major just game. having a center who knows how to like help out the quarterback. Like, I mean, you go into New England right now. David Andrews is going to be huge for that's right. Like Mac Jones' progression as a quarterback, whether it ends up being Cam Newton or Mac Jones back there. It, he's going to be very important for them yeah. being able to figure out what's going on at the line of scrimmage. I'm very comfortable with not having Shaq Mason on there and putting David Andrews on there. I I think I would want to put Deion Dawkins first over Makai Becton then just because of, like I said, he has a little bit more of that experience, a little bit more play history behind yeah. him as well. Yeah, the reason I like Becton is I love the size and I love his athleticism. I think he, you know, he tested off the charts for a guy who's, you know, 6'9", whatever he is. He's just he's an animal. Um and I think, you know, for the most part I think they solidified the right side of that offense. I'm sorry, the left side of that offensive line. Um now it's just a question is can the Jets fill out the right side and and, and sort of keep Zach Wilson protected. But yeah, I, I think for the most part I didn't I did not think offensive line was going to be overly controversial and I and I I think I was right. Yeah, and I think the, a good way to describe Makai Becton is he is a brick wall, but like in the best possible way. Because yeah. like you could say somebody's a brick wall because they don't they don't move, but like he's a brick wall because he is huge. You're not going to go through him, and you can't go around him really because he like he has the size, he has the length, he has all the athleticism, and if he keeps playing the way he is, then he's going to be like the clear cut best left. He's going to be Jonathan Ogden level. Of life. Yeah. He has all of that type of potential. Yeah. 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 All right. I, I, I'm i very good with that. Let's go tight end. I have – I'll go first with this one. I had sure. Gasecki, and then I had Johnny Smith and Hunter Henry. I think those were I, – I struggled with that one a little bit because I'll be honest, I'm not as high on Hunter Henry as other people mm-hmm. are. I actually – I'm higher on Johnny Smith than Hunter Henry. Interesting. Um, partially because of injuries. If I'm if I'm being honest, that's fair. Um, because I he he's a guy who has a lot of talent, but you got to be on the field for it to matter. So I think that played into it for me. Who who's your three? This is again not very controversial. Those are the exact three I had. Um, I would myself flip the Hunter Henry and John New Smith uh, okay. because I think when he is playing at his best, I do think Hunter Henry is one of the best uh, tight ends in the league. And I think at the I think another interesting layer to this conversation about the tight end position, in particular the, the New England tight ends, is I'm not sure that it's going to matter that either of them play in New England because I just don't think either of them are going to be impact the game. Um, enough to warrant the money that they spent on him. So, um, yeah, I was really surprised to see the Patriots go out and get Jonu Smith. I was doubly surprised to see they also um, – I, I shouldn't say I was surprised about Jonu Smith. I was really surprised when they got Hunter Henry to, to, to join Jonu Smith. Um, and I wouldn't be surprised if Jonu Smith was a little surprised that that happened as well. Um, but, yeah, I just – I you know, frankly, in that offense – if Cam Newton is the quarterback, I'm just not sure where those targets are coming from. Um, you know, and and maybe – Maybe McDaniel's and 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 uh, Belichick, you know, they got together and said the only way we can truly make Cam Newton, you know, if we can elevate Cam Newton's game is by giving him some some over the middle throws. But this is not a, you know, we we know that when he was in his prime, he had, he was thrown to a guy like Greg Olson, and and mm-hmm. maybe they're trying to recreate some of that over the middle of the field. But yeah, I was 
perplexed to see him get them both. But at the end of the day, they're two of the best three tight ends in this in this division, and I don't think anyone's really close to Kaseki. I think Kaseki is one of the under most underappreciated and undervalued players um, at his position, but also in the league. Um, I just in elite athletic, uh, elite athletic ability. And again, I think it's going to be a guy that maybe doesn't see the targets he should. Um, and I, I'm real be interested to see what, what happens to Gasecki when he becomes a free agent, because I think he's a player, um, that if he goes to the right seam, particularly the right quarterback, I think he can really, really do some damage and like be a top four or five guy. Kind of have that. I mean, I, it wouldn't be as big of a jump as this, but like that, Darren Waller type of season where yeah. like, you finally just get him in the right targets. system around the right people. Yeah, just getting him enough targets and all of a sudden everything clicks because like you see it with Gasecki when he gets the ball, yeah. he makes stuff happen. He's always making plays. And yeah, I don't even think it's a discussion about who the best tight end in the division is. No. I think that an interesting discussion would be who, uh, how many tight ends in the division would you currently prefer over Dawson Knox? Because I think there's potentially one more. Who would be your one? I think I think I would go to Herndon. Yeah, see, but I just I, see I don't know. That's where I'm. I'm not totally sure because I think I think Knox's ceiling is probably higher than that because of who he's playing with. Right, I would agree with that. I think Herndon is going to get is going to lose his job to Tyler Croft. Really, that should, that should tell you how, what I feel about Chris Herndon. Yeah. Okay. I didn't. I wouldn't have expected that. Honestly, I know I think, I, Croft is I, Croft is just a, a weird type of player where, like, he used to have that kind of juice behind his name yeah. when he was the backup in Cincy. Because when you're a backup and you're still kind of producing, everybody's real hot on you. And then mm-hmm. if you get the opportunity and you don't make something happen with it, everything just falls off immediately. So I, he's a he's a weird one to me. I almost think he's the type of player who's better as a backup than as the, like the yeah. guy. Sure. Herndon or Kraft? I, I think both of them potentially. Yeah, and you know, I'm a I'm an Evan Silva fan. I follow a lot of his work, and there was a lot of conversation during OTAs that that Herndon found himself in the second team with Tyler Croft in the first team. So I think that should tell you a little bit about even what the Jets are starting to think of what they have with Herndon. I think he's just a guy that people talk about a lot, um, but has never really put it together on the field. And how much how much do you think Gasecki's production? Because I I think. John o. Smith and Hunter Henry, like having both of them, huge for the Patriots, but there's so much unknown with their quarterback situation. Like literally even just of who's going to be playing. And then if Cam Newton's playing, is his shoulder good enough to actually get the ball anywhere? If it's Mac Jones, is it because he beat out Cam Newton or is it because Cam Newton just literally couldn't play? Like there's so many questions around that. Who knows what's going to end up happening with them. But with Gusecki, how much did their, like, their wide receiver additions affect him this year? So I'm going to take a quote from Jalen Waddell. I like Mac. And what I mean by that is, is I think there's a, there's a chance that Gasecki ends up with really pedestrian stats because of who's throwing it to him. Mm-hmm. Um, and I like I, – I, I do think you're right about the additions at wide receiver, about where that puts him in the pecking order. This is a team that I think wants to stretch the ball. Don't know why they don't have a quarterback that can do it with the arm strength. Um, <laughs> so I think that's going to leave. I think that leaves. It just leaves him in a weird spot um, for me. And so looking at the two tight end situation in New England, I think that's a system that's going to, I think, change a little bit with the personnel that they have. I still don't think they have that number one wide receiver. So if you ask me, despite where John, all of that money spent this right, right, season. right, right. Hunter Henry and John <laughs> Smith are probably two and three or one in three in the pecking order in new England and Gasecki's what maybe three. Um, so I, I think what it comes down to is, is Gasecki going to get the targets? I don't believe so. And does he have a competent quarterback that can get him the ball and feed him the ball even when he's covered? No. So to me, uh, you know, I, as much as I love Gasecki, I, I don't think there's any argument. You and me both agree. He's the best head in the division. That it won't it won't reflect that in the statistics. No, I, I don't think so whatsoever. I think he's gonna. I think a lot of and to have a completely di- different discussion here. I think a lot of fantasy football owners, whoever drafts him, I think he's probably gonna end up getting drafted a little way too, too probably high. way too high. Yeah, just yeah. because of all the hype around his name. And then you you go back and you look like, oh, well, okay, two is gonna be his quarterback. Um, two is not like a bad quarterback. Like I don't have really bad things to say about him or anything. Wait till we get to quarterbacks. However, yeah, I, I do have some actual thoughts, but like in terms of 
just getting the ball out. Like he's he's not like he's like an unplayable type of quarterback. But there's I just so many other guys there, so it's, gonna, it's interesting. You're really gonna love my. You're gonna. Love I'm my. ready for some spicy takes. I'm ready. I'm ready. I so I actually think that our last two positions are the two toughest positions to figure out with running back and quarterback, and it's partially because of just the availability of talent there. That's right. Um, so I'll let I'll let we'll, we'll defer to yours on this one, so we can flip. Johnu Smith and Hunter Henry. I'll make sure that's flipped on, on the graphic. So it'd be Gasecki, Hunter Henry, and then Johnu Smith. Because I think after that, there's a pretty sizable drop off in just pure talent at that point. And then yeah. you factor in production, and it, it's it's just not even really close. Um, wide receiver. You want to go first on this one? Uh, yeah, sure. I'll go wide receiver first. Um, I think it's pretty straightforward. I think you've got to go Stefan Diggs. Mm hmm. Um, I, I think that's kind of just a non-star. That's just where it, that's where it starts and finishes. Um, number two, Corey Davis. And, really? Okay. Yeah. And, and I think part of that is, and we'll, we'll get into, into this more, but I, I think Corey Davis for the most part is a victim of scheme and, uh, and just not, not a lot of targets. And I think last year was more of a player that I think the, that you could see moving forward than the guy that really struggled his first three or four seasons in the league. Um, but he's a bona fide first round pick. I, I think Corey Davis is a really solid pickup for the Jets. Um, and, I, and I really like him sort of in that position. The third one gets really interesting um, because I think it's very easy for you to point out, could it be Cole Beasley? I, I think if we want to talk about volume and statistics alone, it'll probably end up being Beasley as the mm -hmm. number two or the number three wide receiver um, within the division. But I'm going to go on a limb and I'm going to say something. I'm going to, this might be a hot take, um, but I think it's Will Fuller. And I don't think it will necessarily be reflective in the statistics another, uh, again, because I think he is a very redundant talent to Jalen Waddell. Um, but I think Will Fuller for the most part is another guy that's criminally underrated, big Notre Dame guy. I am, if you know me, um, but I think he's one of the really underrated receivers in the league. Um, and he's unfortunately going to play in a system that doesn't really highlight his, his skill set in a contract year. I didn't really love the fit at all for him in Miami. Um, but hey, he took the money. I mean, I guess I would too. Yeah, I mean, if, you, if you're offered that kind of money, why wouldn't you take it? I So I think I go back to the whole injury thing with him. I struggle to put him on the list of best players because in order to be one of those best players, I think you have to be out on the field. Now, there's no doubt that when he's on the field, he is like he is an extremely talented wide receiver, hard to cover. Whether he's running a go route or not, like he's developed a lot as a wide receiver, I think. But he's just not on the field often enough for me personally to have. Honestly, I didn't even consider him. I considered Jalen Waddle before I considered him, just because I, I think Waddle we has. A, we have a Waddle has. Group. Yeah, so I I, I like Waddle as the third. And I, I don't think people are going to like seeing Cole Beasley not on the graphic. That's um, right. They're like, we're going to catch a lot of heat for that. That's, you know what's going to happen? Fine. They're going to be like, Nate, Nate didn't put Cole Beasley because because <laughs> he's anti vaxxer <laughs> That's what's going to happen. Those are going to be the comments. It's not why well, I didn't. I'm pick sure him. we're going to get some comments like that. Like but I said, like, no, I, I, it's hard because the qualifications for this list, right? What are they? Are they give me the top three guys that'll have the best statistics this year? No, that that's not the uh, that's not the that's not the goal of this exercise. It's really to try to figure out who are the best three players at each offensive position in the division. And mm -hmm. for me, give me, I would take Will Fuller over Cole Beasley 10 times out of 10. Um, and I'm a Cole Beasley fan, even though I, I think he said some stupid shit. I mean, I still like him. I think he's still a really, really good player. I think he's arguably the best slot receiver in game. Um, but in, in terms of overall deep weapons, deep threats, Will Fuller might be one of the best, if not the best deep threat when healthy. And, and I th also think, this is my opinion, um, I also think his, some of his injury stuff has been overblown. He's played through a lot of injury, obviously gets suspended at the end of last year um, where you know we don't get to see him in the final stretch of, the, uh, of that season last year. But he's a guy that he walks into, into Buffalo, he's a 1,000-yard number two receiver here. Yeah, I think there's kind of no doubt about that. I think you could make that same argument for a guy like Waddle. And yeah, I, I just so, haven't seen it yet. And that's, yeah, and and that's, that's, where, that's where I'm kind of taking a leap of faith on that yeah. one with Waddle, where I think that he just seems so polished in everything that he did, where I look at I look at Fuller and 
I mean, he, he, like I said, he has developed a lot from being just a deep threat. But you look at a guy like Waddle, and he can just do everything. He can yeah. run the full route tree. He has the speed to be a burner. Like he does everything that you want him to do. So I, for me, that kind of takes precedent over that. I didn't, to be completely honest, I didn't even think of Corey Grant when I was making my list because I completely forgot that he signed with the Jets. Completely forgot. I actually had Devontae Parker on my list because I Ooh. like him as a wide receiver a lot. I just don't think he's had like the right quarterback play, the right system to have be, the type of production. He might be wide I, receiver three in Miami. Though. I like, I actually like the, I like, I don't want to throw that take out completely. Cause I, like I said, totally forgot that um, Corey Davis signed with the jets. So I got, I actually got to watch Corey Davis play in college mm -hmm. um, because I went to Ohio university. They played nice. Western Michigan in the Mac championship game when Corey Davis was there. He is like an absolute Animal. monster. Yeah, you could tell watching him play that he shouldn't have been in the MAC. Mm -hmm. He should not have been there. He, he should have been somewhere wherever it was better. Love me some action, but like Corey Davis was a much better talent than playing on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday nights late yeah. fall. He, he should have been prime time football, SEC, ACC, Big Ten, wherever. Probably SEC or ACC because. Yeah, that's where the, a lot of the passing that's happens. That's where the elite but, guys yeah. yeah, yeah, in terms of wide receivers and whatnot, unless you go to Ohio State, but that's neither here nor there. Um, he's just a different animal. Like He has every single trait that you want a wide receiver to have. So he has the size. He has enough speed to get open. He, like He can be physical at, the, po at like the point of attack for a jump ball. He does everything. He catches the ball with his hands too, which I think is a very yeah. underrated trait for wide receivers. I think far too often right now you see a lot of wide receivers let the ball come into their body and kind of a ricochet shot here, but like John Brown did that a lot. A lot. He was real big, real big on just like let the ball come to you. And, and a lot of times – Yeah, you know. yeah. And I always looked when I was growing up, I mean I, I had far too many injuries to ever like actually start like a real football career in high school, and that's where it would have ended anyways. But – I always looked up to like a Larry Fitzgerald who like you don't see those types of catches from him and you, you don't ever see drops from him really either. Nope. And Corey Davis is nowhere. Like he's not that level. I'm not trying to say that whatsoever, sure, sure. but he's kind of that mold Built of out player. Of the mold. Yeah. yeah. So I, I like that. I like that list. I think we just have to figure out who is that third. Are we going with, with Fuller or are we going with Waddle? I think it'd be you can be safe and put Waddle down, but just know that I'm not happy about it. <laughs> All right, well, I, that will be noted. That will be noted. Um, but yeah, I guess as the commissioner of the two of us right now, I guess we're gonna have to roll with Waddle on this. We one. roll with Waddle. And, uh, may, who knows? Maybe we'll defer to you on the next one. We'll see. That's fair. Um, so running backs. Yeah, I think running backs is difficult, interesting. This However you want to describe no it, it's, yeah, it's so it's so weak of like it's it's not weak of like running back two, running back three type of guys. It's weak in terms of clear cut number one bell, bell cow, cow running backs. Yeah. yeah, the closest that the division has to that right now, and I mean we just had Antonio Williams on the show last week. He was awesome, but like obviously he's not like a bell cow running back right now. He's still fighting to make the roster. Mm -hmm. Damian Harris, I think, is the closest thing that, that the division has to potentially being that type of running back. But playing in New England, you're never going to get that type of – or those type of touches. Right. I, I put my list as Damian Harris. I have Devin Singletary as the number two on my list. And I, I think there's going to be – that's going to be very much love-hate from people uh, because it's there's almost nobody in between. It's, it's almost like – Devin Singletary is the clear cut number one on the Bills, or let's move him, let's trade him, whatever. Like, that's kind of how it, it, I see fans reacting to him. And then I struggled with the third one because Tevin Coleman for the Jets, like, he had a couple of good seasons earlier in his career. Miles Gaskin, he showed some flashes. Zach Moss, he's our hometown guy, being a Buffalo player. Like, we want to be able to put him on the list. I I struggled with that a lot. I think I I think I might lean more towards Gaskin just because of the amount of touches I think that he's going to be able to get whether that is running the ball, catching whatever. 
But I struggled to leave Zach Moss off the list because I think Zach Moss is a better pass protector than Devin Singletary is, and that factors into all of this too. So I'm I'm interested to hear where you stand on this. So Damon Harrison is the guy. Um, Damon Harris, I should say, is the guy number one. I, I don't think that's, there's much dispute there, which is kind of crazy to think about. I mean, he's, what, a seventh-round pick? Was he undrafted? I mean, the guy, you know, was the – Second or third stringer in Alabama, he um, was, which he means was nothing. But, he was yeah. inactive his entire first season with New England. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, they basically redshirted him. Yeah. Um, so I think Harris is number one. I think Miles Gaskins is number two. I think okay. Gaskin is likely going to be in the conversation as a thousand yard runner this year, and also a fifty to seventy catch guy. Just um, high production all around then. Yeah, yeah. I, I I think he could end up having the best statistics of any running back in the division. Um, I'm not really willing to go all in and say tell you that I think he's the best running back in the division right now. Um, if you looked at my dynasty leagues, you might you, you might disagree that I think that he's the best <laughs> running back in the division. Um, but I think you know, you said it the third is really difficult, and I'm gonna go way out in left field here and tell you about a player that I think is gonna end up being the third best uh third best running back in the division by the year by year's end. Um it's Michael Carter. Oh um, my! I'm, I'm just forgetting about the Jets all over. Well, the place, listen, I'm, I'm just throwing out these obscure <laughs> names that um, that you know guys that I like um, that I, I I had sort of an affinity for during the draft process. Um, I think he is the best pass catching back in the draft coming out this year. Um, I think he has mm-hmm. underrated running ability. I think he has the ability to be a bell cow number one back. Um, and I think by midseason he'll be the guy there in New York that is you know the starter is you know, seeing 15 to 20 touches a game between pass catching um, and running the football and kind of having Tevin Coleman or um, um, who's the other guy that they got? They got P Ryan too, I think. Um, Yeah. Yeah, So I I, I think all all in all, Michael Carter um, is going to bring a dynamic that I don't think the division has, which is that pure pass catcher who can also be a good running back. So I'm going to throw out an obscure name. I'm going to say Michael Carter is my number three running back. Which just goes to tell you maybe the state of the running back position in the division. Yeah, when you're throwing, yeah, I mean he's it, it wouldn't it wouldn't be weird if like I mean if Etn or if um, wow I'm totally blanking on um, the, Najee. the Alabama Najee Harris. Yes, I knew it was Harris. I couldn't remember the first name Najee Harris. Like if one, if either of them went in the division, I don't I don't even think it would be much of a discussion of like oh, no. oh well it's a first round running back like Easy. of course it, there's not much like real real good running back talent in the division right now. That's the weakest spot of the entire division probably for no any position group. But I, yeah, this, I mean, this is going to be a tough one. I don't know how we can swing. I think we're going to have to probably, we'll probably have to agree that. I th- I don't know if we can put, I'm, I like, I, I like Carter a lot. I don't know if we can put him on. I don't know if we could put him on the list yet. So but I would, it's weird. Cause he's, he has the potential. I would say I'm not really willing to get there with Devin Singletary because I don't think he's going to. St- I don't think he's going to be the starter. Okay. I think he's going to be the change of pace guy. So I guess that leaves us. I Zach Moss. see that. I, th- I think if we can agree on Zach Moss at number three, I'd be willing to do that. I could. If if you're saying that Devin Singletary isn't going to be the starter, then I could definitely see that because I. He is. He does fit into more of that change of pace. It's just so weird trying to figure out who's going to be what in the Bills running back that right. I just kind of took the longevity over, I think, what potential is. Because I do think that Zach Moss has a little bit more of the potential to take over the backfield and have more carries. But who knows? Because he has right. his old injury history too. He does. But I I, I think it's just so tough to leave why don't, both why of don't, them off the list. We, I mean, Why don't I we think, do this? Why don't we agree that three has to be a three A and three B, and it's Devin Singletary and Zach Moss in whatever order you want to put it in? I know that's a cheat code. I know that that's it kind that's of a is. Stuff that's a I, I think we. I think we can't. I don't think we could do it. I think we could make like an honorable mentions list that goes on the graphic. Then who are we, we can agreeing on number three? Then I can't. I'm not. I, I'm not willing to put Singletary. I'm fine with that. We'll put Zach okay. Moss. Zach Moss. And I, then I'm fine if we could, we put Michael Carter as the honorable mention, and then. Singletary can go after that, but sure, I'm good with that. Yeah, it's I'm it, good with that. I see. I think where I would knock Singletary the most at the moment is probably his pass blocking ability. I don't think it's because he's a bad running back. I don't and think he's bad, like I don't love see, him as a pass catcher. I think he gets knocked a lot for that, similar to Dawson Knox, because you see like a, he you has a couple drops. of drops, 
in at, like at bad times. moments. Yes, yeah, 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 and that's yeah. where it comes in, and everybody's like, oh, he drops the ball every time, which isn't the case whatsoever. But there's a couple of memorable ones. Yeah. Like I, I was listening. This this really shocked me when I heard it. I was listening to Locked On with Joe Marino, and he mentioned that Gabriel Davis actually has a higher drop percentage than Dawson sure. Knox. And that was shocking. Like I didn't I didn't expect that, but it's because you don't think of like a ton of big moments where he has his drops outside of like right. the New England game. Whereas Dawson Knox, you remember those moments. Devin Singletary, you remember those moments. A lot of times for Singletary, I think it's because it comes on like third down. Right. It's, it's or out of the backfield. In the fourth swing. quarter. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. So I, I, I can live with that where we have Harris, Gaskin, and then Zach Moss. What a what a mosh posh list. It's, a hosh posh list. Yeah. That is, man. <laughs> that's that's a sad list. Yeah, it is. No, I'm it is. Let's call honest. it is. And, I mean, it's a sad list. Yeah. Yeah. And I th- I think we like we said at the at the beginning of it, it's not that like they're bad running backs it's that they're not necessarily running back ones right right and it's 100%. it's unfortunate yeah but i guess running back by committee that's kind of the way the nfl a lot going, of the league is so. going at least the teams that want to do it economically you know yeah right yeah and it seems like the bills are going to continue to follow that path so we'll we'll roll with that list quarterbacks this one i this one could go Anyway, and I have no idea. I think I have to stick to my guns on this one because I put out a list three, four weeks ago, whatever it was, where I had a weird number 10 on my most, my 10 most valuable players on the Bills roster. And I think that kind of points towards where I'm going with this. I, I obviously, Josh Allen is number one. Mm hmm. We can, we can, I, let's, let's just move on from number one. Yeah. We don't, we don't, two, have, to do we don't have to discuss number one. Number two and three is where this whole thing it gets, it gets a little weird. Yeah. I actually, see, I don't even like my choices here, but I, I think I'm going to go number two, Trubisky, number three, Mac Jones. Mm hmm. I don't think I don't think very highly of all of the players. I it was it was we I almost put Tua on the list. <laughs> For anyone listening, Nate just left. He just left. He's off the screen. Um Yeah, I it's it's because there's so much unknown with the other guys. And with Tua, there's so much room to grow for him. But I am I'm almost worried that what we're going to get from Tua is almost Jake Fromm esque where like what he did in college is the best that he we're going to see because that's the best talent that he's going to play with cumulatively against not as good of talent. Because when you go to Alabama, you play against quote unquote the best, but in college it's still not like the absolute best and you're playing with the best talent. And then you go up to New England and Cam Newton. I, I, you just, you're not going to get much from him. And then New York, I, I don't, I just don't trust anything that they have going there with the quarterback at the moment. I think there's potential, but it's weird. I'm going to, I'm going to catch a lot of flex for flat. No, flex. listen, I, but that's where I, like, I can't stray away from the fact that I feel like you. That for saying something so controversial yet so brave. Um, I Trubisky was not on my radar, bud. Let me just – let me just. That's fine. Let's just go that's out fine. there and that's <laughs> good for you. And I'm not sure that – I'm not sure I'd put him at number two, but I don't know that he's not in the top three um, of quarterbacks in this division. I am I hadn't considered it, um, but I certainly – I'm not going to dismiss it. Um, I – like you, I don't have Tua on my list. But did you have Tua three? No, Tua would have, have been Jones. Tua. Yeah, I, you I, wanted, I, you wanted, wanted, it. I you wanted to it. put. I did. I did. I like my. See, I wanted to put Tua on the list just because, like, I, there's been a couple of times where I've said, like, he doesn't have, like, we don't know what he's going to do in the NFL. But like, I for some reason, I'm just getting those vibes from Tua that we've seen the best from him already because he's already played with the best cumulative talent that he's going to play with. Yep. So that worries me with him. So number two for me, I'm, I'm going to throw a wrench in this. I'm not going to say Trubisky. I'm going to say Zach Wilson. And 
the reason I'm going to say Zach Wilson is I'm high on Wilson. Um, I think his I think his game translates. Um, I think he's surrounded with pretty good weapons. I think he's got a decent offensive line, and I think they're they're going to be good defensively. So that should lead him to I think pretty good rookie year numbers. Are you real quick before you get into your third? Are you nervous that having no veteran backup that played an in the decision. NFL is going to impact that? Because that I think that's where my biggest worry with him comes in. Like with with Tua, like at least you know he had a year where he yeah. learned from Fitzpatrick, and he's now going to have Jacoby Brissett, who like obviously like not a great quarterback by any means, but like he's played a little bit. He can still help the guy out. And then you go up to New England. Mac Jones has Cam Newton, who has played despite what he is now. Like he was a good quarterback before. He still knows the game. He can still give some insight to help him out. You don't have that whatsoever in New York. Right. I think that's what worries me the most about him because he has all the potential. But how are you going to get that out of him when you don't have that extra on the field presence who's like, I've been there, I've been in your shoes. I've thrown an NFL pass. Like they literally don't even have that behind him. Listen, I think you're not giving enough credit to my man, James Morgan, but that's neither here nor there. Um, <laughs> what I will say is, yeah, I mean, even Josh Allen had, you know, Derek Anderson is weird as that era yeah. was. Uh, yeah. Derek Anderson is a guy that can come in. Here's, here's where a veteran quarterback helps. It's in the preparation. Um, it's in the film room. It's pregame. It's on the sidelines. It's having a guy who's been through it and who's seen it. Uh, I think it'll be an interesting case study in just how important a veteran presence in the court quarterback room will be. If he takes off and he's you know rookie of the year, everyone's going to start to wonder, well, why 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 are we hiring Joe Flacco? Why is Matt mm -hmm. Schaub still in the league? That, you know these these questions that that end up coming up about you know do you need that veteran presence? So I think it'll be a good case study. But I, Zach Wilson, I think, has the arm that the NFL is looking for, the mobility, the ability to so off schedule, right? Like off script, be able to make plays on the run with his arm. And I think he has that. And, and I think it's a big advantage for rookie quarterbacks that can come into the league that can throw those sideline throws while they're, while they're moving, move the pocket. But I think the Jets are a team that were in a good position to draft a quarterback. Um, that's not something you can say about the Jets every year. Um, I think for the most part, I like what they've got at wide receiver. I think they're deep there. Um, I love, love, love Elijah Moore. Um, I like Corey Davis a lot. I like Denzel Mims. I see you still have, um, uh, what's his name? Uh, they, they just got rid of, they bought receiver. out Crowder, I thought. No, <clears throat> did they? I thought they did. I thought, I thought they restructured it. Did they? Re oh, yes, they did. Thanks. There was talks about buying him up, but they did restructure. Yeah, yeah. Right. So, I mean, those four really solid receivers, Tyler Crofts, you know, Herndon, whatever, but, and they don't have a great, great running game. But I, I, I like the weapons, the pass catching weapons they put around him. And I think he's, he's got a decent enough offensive line. So, yeah, give, give me Wilson number two. I, and, and maybe it's a little controversial, but number three, I think, is easily the hardest decision um, out of this entire exercise thus far. And, and I think for me, I think for the sake of consistency, I'm going to, I'm going to go with Trubisky. All right. Um, okay. Okay. I think for the sake of um, your credibility, I'll hitch my wagon <laughs> for, to you. For my, this I'll, is look, I don't have a whole lot of credibility here. <laughs> this is for the sake of your credibility. Like, let me tell you, you that. Friend. I'll hitch my wagons with you, but just put a disclaimer out there that you bullied me into it. Um, I did no, no I, such thing. I did no such. I, the only look, the only thing I've ever, the only thing I bullied was the NFL into changing that helmet rule. I did that. I take credit for that. That's hey, it. Hey, that, and that's a good one. Um, I, he was not on my radar. Who was I really willing to put number three? I was willing to put Cam Newton number three. Um, I just, I, 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 I don't, I think two is the fifth best quarterback in the division. Fifth. Okay. Let's talk this out. Cause there is a Dolphins fan that lives inside of the Buffalo fanatics world because um, every, I guess every group needs somebody to kind of talk them me, down. Dolphins yeah. fan. Listen, I've got, I've and got, so me got Dolphins a Dolphins fan. fan. He's one of Rico's friends. Um, and he, I mean, he is, he's very smart. He's knowledgeable about football, but he's not going to like hearing this. So I, the you fifth best, that surprised me. Fifth. I, 
He will he will definitely be hearing about this. Yeah, give me Cam, give me give me give me Allen, give me Zach Wilson, give me Trubisky, give me Cam, and give me Tua. Okay. I see, I think I I would put Cam below Tua because I think Cam gets a lot of credit for what he did years ago. Sure. In but I don't I think Cam is a shell of what he was. I agree with that. And I still think shell of 2015 Cam Newton is better than peak to a tongue of Viola. I'm just not a believer. And you know, maybe listen, I'm, I've, I've, I've had similar feelings about quarterbacks and have been wrong before. Um, I had very strong feelings about Josh Rosen was totally wrong about him. Um, so are. it's right, right. So it's totally possible that Tua walks in this year and becomes, um, you know, the second best quarterback in the division. I would highly bet against it. Yeah, no, I mean, that's why he wasn't on my list. He would have, if he made my list, it would have been third. But obviously, I don't think very highly of him if I'm putting somebody who is a backup quarterback on the list. I cannot wait for you to post the quarterback position on Twitter. Yeah, no, I can't wait for it either. I loved, I love doing stuff like that where like stuff that I actually have reasoning behind why I believe it. It's not just a hot take, I, but it's still a hot take. Like, I love doing that stuff. Oh yeah, I mean it's a hot take. There's no doubt about it. But I also think it's not it's not far off the center. It's not far off the line for me. Yeah, it's it's not completely unreasonable, unbelievable, whatever. Because there's definitely like reasons why the other guys shouldn't be on the list. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so we'll, okay, so then we gotta we gotta get a finalized list here. Obviously, Josh Allen number one, no doubt about it. Never was. I think him so. Real quick, the guys that I said at the beginning, there's a couple of like guaranteed locks. Okay. It was literally just him, Gasecki, and Stefan Diggs. Those were the only absolute locks. I thought yep. everybody else, whether it was position that we would put them or somebody making it over the list, I think there was arguments to be made in some way for everybody else. Those were the only three that I had as like absolute locks. Number one, Josh Allen. We'll go Zach Wilson. Okay. Mitch. And then, yeah, yeah, Mitch. Yeah, it's got. I mean, we have to. We have to. We can't. We can't have that discussion and then not put Mitch on there. No, no he's on. But I, I really do believe that Mitch is right now, not future, but like right now. I think he is a top three quarterback in the division. In the division, I agree with that. I think if he, if, I think Miami would be a better team with him at quarterback. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the Jets would be fine with him at quarterback. Um, that so that actually surprises me. Not surprises me that you say that. It surprises me that, and this kind of going back to the whole. Like the Jets don't have anyone to kind of mentor. Trubisky would have been a great. Trubisky would have yeah. been perfect, and yeah. he would have made a little bit more money there. He, I mean, he might not have made it through the entire season because they want to get Zach Wilson in, but like he would have been almost like the perfect type of guy to do that because. And this is why I, I've said this about him and Allen. Like if Allen goes down for a little bit, Trubisky was like the perfect kind of guy to bring in because though he's nowhere near actual Josh Allen. Right. They, he tries to play similar, so you don't lose as much. That's right. And, you could play a, almost the exact same offense right. and have him run it and and feel like, hey, you know, listen, at the end of the day, it's, Mitchell Trubisky is the kind of guy you can't really look at the stats and and and, say, and, and take take what you're going to take from Mitchell Trubisky because I think overall the stats have not been that bad. It's The, the stats don't a lot of times have not met the eye test. And, and I also think that for the most part, I'm not a big Matt Nagy fan. So I, I think he was a – I think there was a little bit of circumstance playing uh, for Trubisky's lack of success, but overall, mm-hmm. I find it hard to put uh, anyone other than Allen and Zach Wilson over him. Um, yeah, I, I think that I'm good with that list. So we have three. I, I'm very interested when these all go out. So this will go out on Friday, and then sometime over the weekend, the actual graphic that has all of them will go out. I can't wait for that. I like. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I'm going to hit that one. RT real hard. <laughs> Yeah, that I I really love when whenever I and this is like a similar reaction that I got when I put Trubisky on my top ten most valuable players for the Bills. Similar reaction I, I expect because oh how can you put a backup on this list? Well, the other guys just Josh aren't Allen's that great. Backup, though. Yeah, it's it's Josh Allen's backup. Like the other guys aren't that great, and this guy was a starter, albeit he he isn't anymore. There's a reasoning why he's not a starter, but like who else are you gonna pick? Right. No, I, I, I trust me, man. I'm with you, and and I the the Trubisky conversation is really, I think, very interesting to me. So I'm glad that you brought it up because I don't know that I would have brought it up to be able to have the conversation. So at least 
at least we made roughly 10 minutes. Uh, we, we cut out 10 minutes of conversation for Mitchell Trubisky, which is probably 10 minutes more than any podcast in America has put towards him this year. So yeah, I, I think I think I might have talked about Trubisky more than anybody in like the entire Bills community this Wear offseason that, like, because I've talked about him twice right? now. I've Wear talked that, about like, him a badge twice. <laughs> yeah. All right, and I, this it was really good, honestly, that we had more than just me doing this because I would have forgotten about multiple players. Um, I wouldn't have had as good of reasoning for some players. Like I would have completely left Corey Davis off the list and that would have just been a bad list at that point. So I, I really appreciate you coming on for, yeah, to man, do this pleasure. with me. Yeah. And you know, keep up the great work. Listen, man, no, I, I think we, um, I, I, I follow a lot of folks on Twitter um, a lot of different uh, markets. I try to, you know, kind of have my thumb on different markets so that I can, I think Buffalo, Western New York, um, just this fan base in general has one of the best, um, you know, group of content creators out there. Um, I think, you know, you guys do a great job and, um, you know, keep up the good work. I'm, I'm happy to come on whenever, whenever you need me, man. You, you've got my cell phone. I'm, I'm happy to join whenever you guys, uh, whenever you guys need. And once I'm a little more settled in my apartment, I'll have my own <laughs> studio and everything. But, uh, for now you get my kitchen with my, with my beams in the background. Otherwise, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to do it whenever, man. I, I, I do really appreciate you having me on. Hey, I appreciate you doing this at like right after a move. I'm actually gonna be moving in like, I think three, two, three weeks at this point. I'm moving out of my apartment, moving a little bit more downtown-ish. Where, I'm not where looking forward to that. Columbus, Ohio. Okay, nice. Yeah, um, well, here's what I'll tell you. As uh, as a person that moved an entire apartment in eight days uh, and basically had to dump all of my crap here, and then I, I was on a trip the last couple of days in Denver, and so I basically dropped all of my crap off from the other apartment here, left, and now I'm here with lots and lots of unpacking to do. So, uh start early, start often. Uh, you can never yeah. start early enough. That is my advice to you, my friend. Yeah. I've moved a couple of times and that's an understatement because I've moved, I think almost every year for the uh, last, however many years, just because be I young. didn't like where I was living, didn't like the apartment, whatever, or just moving because of like in college, I moved every single year too. So I yep. didn't stay that's, in the same that's apartment. That's what I did in college as well. So it and sucks. I hate it. When you've got a, I'm, I'm a very big, like I start packing like a week early so I can get some of it out of the way. Well, I was going to say, you know, when you have a girlfriend who likes to have a lot of things, <laughs> girlfriend, but, uh, you know, it can be a little bit more difficult. But when you're just moving yourself, it's totally fine. But then you got to move another person who just loves things. It's not not as fun anymore. Well, the, see, that'll that'll be the next move that's happening because I, I don't have a girlfriend. I have a fiance. And so we will be next year. We will be joining those apartments and joining that's going to be moving two like double the move at that point yep. so yeah and she she definitely likes she likes things she likes having oh, things she likes having nice do. things and so that'll be that'll be interesting i'm and, not expecting a lot of my stuff to make it through that move uh i can tell you that in this move roughly four to five percent of the things were mine <laughs> and all of them are in my back room in my office just sitting there i was um, gonna say the the second room that most people don't see yeah yeah, is, that's what is I'm the expecting. man cave? Yeah, that's that that's the room. And you know, here's the other thing: I, I hired movers. Highly recommend hiring movers. I or yeah, I I should. Um, I might. It's. I here's know it's do. worth the expense. Here's what you're gonna do: you're gonna tell yourself right now that when you do move in with a lady, be the hero and, and oh, get we'll, a mover. And yeah, we'll hire movers for that. Yeah. I think. For, I think for this move. I will be Solo. hiring my friends yes. and I will be paying for their drinks. Some delicious uh, Columbus pizza. Pizza, drinks, whatever they need that night. I think I think the expenses are obligated to. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely, my friend. Yeah. All right. Well, I appreciate it. We went about an hour, which uh, I think that's a that's a good show time for us. That's shorter than what Casey and I do because Casey Casey gets very random. Hopefully, he's here next time that we have you on. Because yes, definitely bring me on when we got us three. I'm getting I'm happy the full to Casey that. experience. I I can't wait for you to experience that. Well, I'm looking forward to it. Let's set it up. I'm uh once he once he can get away from the dadding. Um, I'm I'm happy. I'm I'm happy to join both of you. Awesome. All right, let me get a, a go Bills, and we'll wrap it up that way. All right, baby, go Bills. Go Bills. Yeah.